Aloha and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Boy, do we have an interesting show for you tonight. For the past year and a half, maybe two years, I have been serving as a member of the Honolulu City Charter Commission. And we uh, were able to put together 20 questions that will affect the charter of the city and county of Honolulu for you to vote on in the upcoming November election. And here's the good news, or the exciting news, I have with me this afternoon the Vice Chairman of the uh, Charter Commission, Mr. Kevin Mulligan, and he is uh, here to tell, you know, answer questions and present the various uh, items that we're going to be discussing. So welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Glad and to be oh, here. Yeah, see, and look, this is what the Charter Commission did today, which is uh, Thursday, September 22nd. There was a notice in the newspaper, and what it did is it listed all 20 items that are up for discussion, and as well as the questions themselves laid out in a way that you can take into the polling booth, see? That's it. So what I recommend you do, folks, is just take it off your newspaper and here it is. But meanwhile, Kevin, we are going to, we have a very short period of time, and we, uh, we have to discuss 20 questions. Mm -hmm. 20 questions. Give, give me a little bit about um, what you were uh, shooting for with these uh, as a member of the uh, Charter Commission. And what, uh, well, I think what we tried to do is uh, think about how we could improve city government and looking towards the future in terms of challenges and uh, that, that, that we're going to face not only in the near future but you know 10, 20 years and beyond. And uh, that was a very important part of what we tried to do is really look to the future and, and not just respond to pressing issues uh, in the present but really look to the well, future, to the future and how we could make things better. And there were 11, uh, 13 members. 13 members. A very good cross-section. So um, if we're going to get through this, we, uh, we need to get started. So, oh, by the way, here, take a look at that. There were 154 proposals that we reviewed. We got down to 20 mm -hmm. that we have up for the general uh, election on uh, November 8th. And uh, this is a process that uh, occurs every 10 years with the uh, city and county. So let's have the first question. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, the first uh, charter amendment uh, deals with the police commission and what we tried to do here is increase accountability and transparency over how the police department is, is uh, administered and give the police commission the authority to suspend or dismiss the chief. Uh, right now that's rather difficult and this makes it easier, uh, and it also makes it uh, required that the chief of police be required to submit a written explanation if they disagree with the finding of the police commission. Right now, that's not a requirement. It is being done, but we're making it a requirement in the charter. Okay, great. So this is a, 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 a an amendment for accountability. The charter, the second charter amendment, uh, has to do, um, we're going to switch off, so this is my turn, Kevin. The second charter amendment uh, allows the Ethics Commission to set the salaries of uh, the executive director and the staff attorneys. Now, this sounds like it may be uh, pretty routine, something that should maybe have been already there, but it isn't, and as a result, um, there is some, uh, the appearance that by controlling the salaries, the, in, the Ethics Commission would not be as independent as it should be. Um, we, number three. Okay, should the Department of the Processing Attorney control its budget after it's approved by the City Council? Basically what this does is give the uh, prosecuting attorney who is an elected official control over its budget once the City Council passes it. In other words, the executive branch or the mayor can't withhold funds once the city council approves the budget. And again, this is a way of making uh, one of the watchdogs agencies of the city more independent of any outside influence. Not that any may exist now. 
number four uh, has to do with uh, rapid transit. Actually, this is uh, your, th your thing, but what this does essentially is that it forms a, it removes the um, operational side of the rapid transit from heart, from the current mm -hmm. uh, agency that's responsible for building uh, the, the system and transfers it back into the um, Department of Transportation. A very, very important part of this uh, amendment was to make sure that there is a coordinated uh, balance uh, between the fares and the operations for the um, rapid transit system, for the bus, and for handicap, uh, handy vans. Right. So I hope that people pay close attention to this. Uh, number five. This is really an attempt to uh, increase the supply of affordable housing by changing the criteria uh, where persons would be eligible for this. Uh, it, it's currently at 50 percent or less of the median household income. We're, we're proposing raising it to 60 percent and also changing the provision that the housing remains affordable in perpetuity and changing it to at least 60 years and we're hoping that that will provide more incentive for uh, developers to create affordable housing which we all know is in uh, short supply. Well, that's great and so our next amendment that we have coming up on amendment number six or question number six is that um, we want our departments uh, to prepare uh, plans. As, as Kevin was ta uh, said earlier, this is about the future. So really, we would like to have the city departments plan out uh, future infrastructure plans. I think uh, they would be functional plans or other types of plans mm -hmm. like that. Okay, Charter Amendment number seven. Uh, this actually addresses the issue of climate change, which is an increasingly important issue. And again, an indication of looking to the future. Uh, we feel that it's a good idea that the city actually create an office of climate change to address the issues that come about uh, because our climate is changing. Uh, we're an island community and we need to be prepared for uh, sea level rise and sea level intrusion and other issues that are related to uh, the warming of the planet. Absolutely, and one of the great things about this amendment, Kevin, was the fact that so many young people uh, testified yes. in favor of it. So many people from mm -hmm. the uh, University of Hawaii. Uh, it was it was really, uh, I think, uh, one of the exciting things that we have in here. Um, and then number uh, question number eight, Charter Amendment eight is: Should a new Department of Land Management be responsible. What this means is that right now, land management decisions in the city and county of Honolulu pretty much spread over a number of departments. So it's actually hard to deal with, hard to keep control, mm -hmm. control of. And uh, this, this hopefully, if this amendment passes, we'll be able to centralize and coordinate all of that and to make sure uh, that the people's voice are uh, heard in this process uh, the, the, this new department will have to comply with all environmental laws mm -hmm. and more than that it would have to be uh, its work would be ultimately approved uh, by the city council. Correct. Okay, Charter Amendment number nine is an interesting proposal. Uh, this attempts to address a concern related to the uh, Honolulu Zoo which has recently lost its accreditation. Um, the accrediting agency had recommended that there be a dedicated source of funds. And what this uh, chart amendment proposes is that one half of 1% of the estimated annual real property taxes be used to help the zoo operate. Uh, this is not an open-ended amendment. It's predicated on the zoo achieving accreditation by 2023. And if it doesn't, then the uh, chart amendment would uh, sunset automatically. Well, one of the, you know, the zoo is kind of a special place because we're dealing here with living, living things. Right. So without the guaranteed source of funding, people who set accreditation are concerned and as rightfully they should be mm -hmm. about whether we're going to take care of um, all of the living animals that are there. And then Charter Amendment number 10, 
does, uh, what it does is that it uh, gives concurrent powers to the mayor and the city council to establish special funds when they're needed. Uh, and there was a, con over the years, there have been different approaches to doing that, having first of all restricted that only to the mayor and then subsequently only to the city council. It makes no sense because they both have to be involved. And it also allows both the city council and the, and the mayor, again, to uh, amend the executive budget to bring it, make it current uh, as needs change. And, and that is an important part of the flexibility needed to meet, uh, you know, the, the governments of today and the future. Uh, Charter Amendment number 11 deals with the Clean Water and Natural Lands Funds and basically it establishes an advisory council that's appointed by the, the mayor and the council and it establishes a process for these funds to be used. Um, th this is not currently in the charter and there were questions and problems about actually accessing projects using these funds and hopefully as a result of this charter amendment those funds will be able to be used uh, more readily. Yeah, again, this is another one of those amendments that got a tremendous amount of community support. Mm. Now, we Charter Amendment 12 is something that I think, uh, again, adds to the efficiency of government because what it does is that it requires and commissions of the um, city are, ex with the exception of the Board of Water Supply and the uh, Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transit, HART, the, the, uh, except for those two, all the other boards and commissions need to be periodically reviewed, mm -hmm. evaluated, to see whether or not they should be retained or repealed or maybe uh, modified, you know. So mm -hmm. this is a way of keeping our government current uh, to its knees. Well, I mean, okay. to the needs of its people, not on its needs. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Charter Amendment number 13, and this deals with the grants and aid fund. This is uh, one of the proposals you worked on, Governor. And um, Yes. And what we're trying to do here is make the grant and aid fund be the sole source. There's a commission that reviews these grant and aid requests, and the objective here is to make it the sole source for city-funded grants, uh, to federally uh, tax-exempt nonprofit organizations that provide services to the disadvantaged. And uh, this is, I guess, to provide more transparency, accountability, and uh, uniformity in how these grants and aids are actually granted. Right. And it also is good for the people who are applying, because right. then there would be one clear process that you would need to do this. Uh, amendment number 14, or question uh, number 14, actually um, is just a way of bringing things, uh, uh, updating, updating the election process uh, when there is a vacancy for the mayor, prosecutor, or council members. Now, what this is about is that in order to make sure that our service people and others who are far away in Afghanistan or Iraq, they ha that they have enough time to participate in an election. Mm -hmm. So this just uh, moves the deadline from 60 to 120 days. At this point in time, you know, we're doing pretty well. We're going to have a chance to talk about this more in a minute. And we want to make sure that you all come back because here's your chance to learn about what's going to be on the ballot regarding the city charter in November. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for E Hanakako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on E Hanakako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then.
Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihei. And today I am revealing myself as a member of the uh, Honolulu City and County Charter Commission and giving you a little bit about what you have, um, a preview of what you have to vote on in the upcoming November election. And with me I have the Vice Chairman of the Charter Commission himself, and we are in the process of going through all of the amendments. Now, if you need, if you want to call in, our number is 415-871-2474. And uh, we will be uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. So now we are on Charter Amendment question number 15. Okay, this basically oh, you got a addresses good <laughs> the term limits for the prosecuting attorney, mayor, and city council. And we're extending the uh, terms for the mayor and the councils from two to three. Uh, presently, the prosecuting attorney does not have a term limit. I think basically uh, we were looking for uh, consistency and uh, not so much turnover. I know uh, for myself, uh, I was interested more in the council. Uh, and, and providing uh, the kind of legislative oversight that takes time to develop, uh, but it also applies to those other offices as well. Well, you know, Kevin, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about this particular amendment, if you don't mind, because sure. it, the knee-jerk reaction, the knee-jerk reaction from, unfortunately, a, a great number of people is, you know, the rascals shouldn't be there, and, uh, which is a kind of a kind of a bogus in the sense that why did we elect them in the first place? But mm -hmm. in any event, uh, that's sort of the reaction. Yet, on the other hand, the, if you have somebody that's doing a good job, then really, my point of view, uh, and actually, I have to confess, I'm one of the people on the commission that would have abolished all term limits, mm -hmm. not just extended. And the reason being that when you have a good person in there, you know, it, why not keep them? And if they're not doing the job, then just do what voters are supposed to do, which mm -hmm. is uh, kick them out of office, vote for somebody else, you know. Because one of the consequences of the current um, term limits is the, is the fact that everybody changes almost at the same time. And you, you yeah. start all over again. And well, you're losing, really you're losing institutional memory, you're mm -hmm. losing experience, and I think from the, exe from the legislative standpoint, if there are term limits, I think that there's an imbalance of power that shifts to, to the, the executive. Exactly, exactly. and know? that's why I think if there are going to be term limits at all, it ought to be on the executive I agree. and not on the legislative branch. I agree completely. Okay, what do we got next? All right, Charter Amendment 16, which is... Oh, this is a great one. And, and, you know, a lot of these things don't sound tremendously uh, interesting like the term limits, but they are very important. Mm -hmm. And right now what happens is that there's one department that is responsible for doing the, the, the design and uh, planning of um, construction projects. And the thing about that is that the, that uh, responsibility runs from huge projects to tiny projects. Right. And what it, it made more sense if, for example, the parks department actually was responsible for planning the little parks that are, that are necessary. Mm -hmm. And so as a matter of just good efficiency in government again, this amendment would make it possible to, uh, to do that, to make sure that uh, smaller projects are handled directly by the departments that are responsible for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is, uh, Charter Amendment 17 is a kind of a simple one, but apparently the mayor currently is obligated to sign uh, a, a large number of documents uh, within city government and this has become onerous and so what this does is it <coughs> provides for the delegation of the signing of documents primarily to the managing director and the deputy managing director and to department heads only with respect to those uh, issues or items that are specific to that department so again this is uh, an efficiency 
uh, type of uh, amendment. Can you imagine, back in, there was a day in the city and county of Honolulu when the mayor would uh, be signing every document was not that onerous, but it's getting pretty bad. When I was governor, I mean, I, I used to tell people, you can tell how long somebody was in office you know, uh, as governor or as mayor by watching their signature become more and more illegible, <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, because you know, there are so many documents that you have to, you know, fortunately for us at the, at the state level when I was in office, well, that was, uh, that requirement was on the, uh, on the uh, statute, by statute, so we didn't have to amend the state constitution, unfortunately, mm -hmm. with the um, city and county, it's in the charter. So, what do we got next? Oh. This is another one, uh, another efficiency uh, proposal, and um, and uh, w dealing with the fire commission, which is uh, what the fire commission is supposed to do is help the fire department by giving as much community input as they as necessary. And uh, the people felt that they would be much better if we had a broader representation. So this would take care of that, and it was also an opportunity to update whatever duties and functions the fire chief was in charge of. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this deals with the reapportionment uh, and, and removing the requirement that they be no more than uh, uh, five of the city council reapportionment commissions, nine members be from the same political party. And if I recall correctly, it, uh, the elections in the city are nonpartisan, so this really doesn't have any uh, relevance since it's uh, they're, they're nonpartisan. Yeah, it's a nonpartisan election, so this makes sure this would be one way, uh, just making it consistent. Right. Um, the last uh, charter amendment twenty is just is the what we're calling what we call the housekeeping amendment, and it is uh, basically an amendment that will conform current, uh, you know, just confirm the charter to what current practices are actually happening. Uh, make sure that we conform to the legal requirements that the city uh, has to uh, deal with. In other words, these are all things that don't change policy but ha are, are required. And so mm -hmm. it's our opportunity to um, clean up the books, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so all of us have an opportunity to vote on these charter amendments, learn more about them for the upcoming election. And we got a few minutes to talk about where people can go and actually uh, see some of this information. Now, first of all, we have a, um, we have a brochure that is being prepared. Yep. It's got all the questions here. It's got the explanations. It's got a much more detailed explanation than uh, Kevin and I could do in our short period of time. And as I understand it, Kevin, each, every household on Oahu will get a copy of that. Uh, That's correct. Yes, and it, it provides not only a summary of the uh, proposed amendment, uh, but what the current situation is and what would actually happen if the Charter Amendment is adopted by the voters. And, 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 and I'm, uh, we, as, uh, as we have been ex uh, extremely careful to make sure that it's uh, very objectively uh, placed out there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and don't forget, you've got this, uh, this uh, two-page, well, what do you call these things? Spadia. Spadias. This is a spadia. I, I, I may not have known a lot about government, when I, before I was appointed to the Charter Commission, but now I know about Spadias, yep. which is my new knowledge. And so this is a chance for people to take uh, advantage of it. And um, what's the website? The website is uh, Honolulu Commission, chartercommission.org. HonoluluCharterCommission.org. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, you know, go to that uh, site and see Again, all of this information, mm -hmm. any kind of explanation. And I, I should also say, uh, as um, the Charter Commission will be publishing some of this in the, in the various uh, ethnic newspapers, right? That's correct. And, and we hope to run some public service announcements. And we're going to go out to various neighborhood boards and community organizations that request uh, 
speakers from the Charter Commission to do exactly what we've done here. Yeah, so if anybody out there wants to hear the vice chairman of the commission, his name is Kevin Mullen, he's right here, <laughs> and he is, uh, if he's available, more than willing to come out and talk to you about uh, what this um, is all about. Now, I know that this upcoming election in November is, you know, is, we are all looking at the Donald Trump and Hillary and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that many of you are out there campaigning for your favorite uh, statesman, I'll call them, or stateswoman. And, 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 but don't forget that these charter amendments are very, very important. They're very important. I, I think you you know from just just from the range of what we discussed. I'm mm -hmm. starting with the uh, police commission, which you had a lot to do with, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and others that uh, uh, that other people contributed that will affect the future of uh, city government for a long time. Exactly, and as you mentioned earlier, this opportunity only comes about once every ten years. Uh, charter amendments can be put on by the council or, or the mayor, for that matter, in non-charter commission years, but you probably only have maybe a, a few, one or two charter amendments. But uh, it, it's in, in this particular window that people have an opportunity to really make uh, broad changes and important changes to the charter, which is the city's governing document. So we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you to learn more about these amendments and obviously vote on November uh, in this upcoming November election. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Talk Story with John Waihei. And thank you to my special guest, Kevin Mulligan, the Vice Chairman of the City and County of Honolulu Charter Commission. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs>